the lady asked me uh, was that what is uh, your charge and as soon as I said I'm a Christian and I'm here because of my faith she got so mad at me and she get she said get out of here you are infidel you and you are dirty you need to be executed immediately that really broke my heart and I told her hey I'm here because of my faith and I'm proud of that I am NOT A CRIMINAL. HI, THIS IS JOEL ROSENBERG WITH THE ROSENBERG REPORT IN JERUSALEM WITH A YOUTUBE EXCLUSIVE. WE'RE GOING MORE IN DEPTH WITH uh, MY NEW DEAR FRIEND uh, AND, and uh, SHIA MUSLIM CONVERT TO CHRIST FROM IRAN, MARZIE AMERE ZADEH. AND I'M SO GLAD TO HAVE YOU IN THE STUDIO, SO GLAD TO HAVE YOU HERE ON YOUR FIRST EVER Yes. trip to Israel. You who grew up, uh, born in 1979, in the, in, the, in the swell of the Islamic revolution, the Ayatollah Khomeini taking over the country, everybody in Iran thinking, oh, this is a good thing, and it didn't turn out that way. Your story is interesting, and I want people to know that for the next 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or whatever it's going to be, we're going to go in depth, because what we did on the Rosenberg Report on the main broadcast was wonderful. It was so great to get your insights, but your story is so interesting. You've written two books. We'll put them up on the screen so people can see them, know about them, and buy them. But I want to make sure we cover several things. First, um, how you came to faith in Jesus Christ in Iran when it wasn't like, you know, it's not exactly a Christian country yet. Uh, second, how you became someone who would start to share the gospel with everyone you could meet and distribute New Testaments. That's an interesting story. But then your arrest, uh, going to Evan Prison, and then how you got out of prison, something we didn't even touch on uh, on the main Rosenberg Report show. So, Marzia, uh, let's begin. How in the world did you, a young, sweet, Shia Muslim girl in Iran, but but trapped in in a in a country and a culture that was not hospitable to the gospel of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus get you and yeah, woo you? As you mentioned, <laughs> I was born a few months before the Iranian Revolution, and I wasn't lucky to experience freedom at all. And uh, they people didn't appreciate the great king that they had before the revolution, and as a result of that. A group of fanatic Muslims came to power, and since then, Iranians are suffering uh, for because of you know, not having their their rights, and they lost all their freedoms. Uh, and as you know, all religious minorities uh, in Iran are persecuted, including Christianity. Uh, but even though with all those things, uh, you know, God. Uh, showed himself to me more than 20 years ago, and I gave my heart to Jesus. And showed yourself, like, you mean literally? Uh, yeah, it's like a long through. story. I shared all the uh, uh, details in both my books. Uh, but uh, if I wanted to make it brief, from mm -hmm. my childhood, I always was curious about the truth, and I was seeking to, uh, to, f to find a way to get to know God more and under the Islamic rules, uh, it was not possible because- You can't really ask questions and- Yeah, in Islam, it's all about the punishment. And at mm. schools, they ta uh, taught us about that uh, if you do uh, commit slightest sins, you get uh, punished immediately by God. And I could not uh, accept the definition of God in Islam. Um, Muslims are, uh, are praying namaz five times uh, a day and they keep repeating Arabic words. As a kid, I still I had lots of questions. Why I have to speak to my God in Arabic mm -hmm. instead of my native language Farsi? Why I have to cover myself? Why I have to bend uh, in front of a God who loved me? And why uh, at a specific times of a day I have to speak to him? If I talk to him in another time, he will not listen to me. Mm -hmm. And I had all those uh, challenges and questions. Which, Did anyone have answers? Uh, my theology teachers always got mad at me when I asked those questions, and they told me you need to follow the Islamic rules if you wanted God to be satisfied with you. But then the Lord started speaking to you in dreams. Yeah, the first thing that started was through a dream that through a white horse, he, God horse. showed. Yeah, he okay. came to my dream. Uh, people can read the details right. in my book, but God revealed his uh, love to me through that white horse. And after that, that dream really changed my life because I never experienced the love of God and I don't know why he talked to me through the white horse. Uh, but I knew from the beginning that the God who created me, he loves me even more than uh, my earthly father, more than my family members. And then, you know, other miracles happened. I had the experience of healing the first time that I attended the church. 
uh, that at that time when I say the church in Iran, building churches are not uh, allowed to have services. Secret in, uh, church. No, in in two, uh, in uh, during that time there was only one building church that the government allowed uh, pastors to preach in Farsi mm -hmm. okay. because most of the churches uh, Armenian pastor preach in um, their own language. So that's and they are not like well, they're Armenian, they're technically Iranian citizens, but they're not really yes. part of us. They can. They yeah, they are not. Yeah, if they want. but uh, that was funny that uh, even though they were preaching in for Farsi, the government put their intelligence office right in front, their security office right in front of the church, and they had their cameras and they were checking people who comes oh, to that church, and they told the pastors if uh, someone. Uh, comes, you know, every week they should report their names mm -hmm. to uh, those people. They, there, there were discussion between them. That's why I couldn't attend that church uh, regularly, like every week. But I had the chance to uh, attend a few so times. So how old were you when, when the Lord Jesus really convinced you that he was the way, the truth, and the life, not Islam? Yeah, uh, at, at the age of 17, it was the time that God uh, revealed his love through that white horse okay. to me. But uh, at that time, I didn't know anything about uh, Jesus. And a few la la years later, one of my friends who has converted to Christianity, she shared with me about Jesus, that he's mm -hmm. the son of God who came to this earth to free us from our sins. He died on the cross for our sins. And a lot of things when he, she shared, I could not believe because uh, in... Under, in, in Islam, Islam, they teach yeah. us that Jesus uh, was only a prophet. Mm -hmm. And I could not believe that um, Jesus was the son of God and God, that mm -hmm. uh, we believe in him. Um, that's why I got curious and I started reading Bible and mm -hmm. um, started uh, doing some research about other religions. Uh, but the day that really changed my life, I started bidding, uh, giving my heart to Jesus because of lots of miracles and dreams that God was showing me during that time. But the day that really changed my life was the day that I was alone in my room. I was praying to, to God and suddenly I received the flames of the Holy Spirit. The fire of God came, uh, came on me and I started praying uh, in tongues, which is one of the gifts that Jesus promised uh, in Bible. And I didn't know how that happened. It wasn't on my control at all. And suddenly for a few seconds, I saw Jesus in front of me. He was in white clothes. And beside him, there was a big throne that was, uh, that was uh, covered by shining golds and many jewels. And I saw that vision and I couldn't believe and my tears was coming down. And it was the first time that... You said you couldn't believe, but actually you could believe. In this case, it was yeah, astonishing that it was happening. It but, was the first... But uh, it, and it, what it I'm saying, you. it was the first time that I could meet God that close. Mm. I could meet His presence. I could feel His presence right in front of me and seeing Him. That was unbelievable to me. That that experience, I nobody was with me. No one forced me to anything. Mm. No one uh, cast a spell on me. Mm. And I had no explanation for what happened to me and it takes for hours and hours without my control and I was just crying and I felt God had mm. removed the curtain before my eyes and I could see the truth about Jesus. Mm. That's why I gave my heart to Amen. Jesus, uh, which changed my whole life. And it did change your life because suddenly uh, in, the, in the days, weeks, months following, you, you wanted to tell other people. You thought, well, I now know the truth. Now I need to Make sure other people at least hear it, right? Whether they believe or not is different. So you became quite bold. And at some point you, you link up with your friend, Mariam, who's had a similar experience, has come to faith in Jesus Christ. And you two start not only sharing the gospel, but distributing New Testaments. What was that like? And how much courage did it take in Iran as young women to start telling other people about Jesus? Yeah, when you meet your God in that way and you experience his love, nothing can stop you. Mm. And you wanted to share this with everyone, no matter what happened to you. That was about me, that right after that experience, I felt I need to share this message. I need to, uh, with people, I need to tell them that Jesus is the truth. And I was very curious also to learn more about Christianity. In Iran, it wasn't possible. That's why I traveled to Turkey and uh, I got involved with some uh, Christian ministries and it was there to that- To disciple you, to help you grow yes, in your they, theological they understanding. Yeah, they had some uh, theology um, leadership 
classes that me and my friend uh, attended. And after finishing that, we decided to return because we wanted to give this message to our yeah. people. And then we started the mission that uh, we, um, uh, God gave another uh, vision to distri distribute Bibles in Tehran um, because we knew that people cannot find Bibles in any bookstores. Mm -hmm. And he showed me that Iran is like a big desert, that there is no seed. And he told me, first you need to plant those seeds, and then I will grow all those seeds with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we uh, contact the Christian ministry uh, who were in uh, UK. We asked them, send thousands of Bibles. It wasn't uh, easy, and they had to find uh, illegal ways to smuggle. And praise God, finally, we received all those uh, Bibles. And portion by portion, every time we would receive a few thousand. And then uh, we, we bought a map because we wanted to have a strategy to okay. cover every area in Tehran okay. and we put it on the wall that's and where we you were started. raised that's where you were uh, uh, you, or you were living at the time yeah, yeah I was uh, uh, yeah I was born in a small city in the south of Iran but okay. most of my time I lived in Tehran okay. later we moved to Tehran and uh, that's why we started from the north to the south and we covered all areas and later we were able to take some Bibles to other cities before uh, you were arrested how many New Testaments do you think that you were able to distribute? Uh, almost 20,000 New wow. Testaments that we distributed. That's and um, yeah, and uh, I, I heard from some uh, people in the, um, uh, some of our friends, they had connections uh, in the parliament. And they mentioned that uh, uh, some people, MPs, they had a security meeting and they were mentioning that that a big Christian uh, or organizations started distributing Bibles in the country. Probably, you know, some of those people who received the Bibles in okay. the mailbox, okay. they were prejudiced Muslim, reported to the uh -huh. government. And that was an alarm to them that they need to find who they are and arrest them. But they didn't know it's just two girls with two backpacks. <laughs> and praise God, even in prison, they didn't know it was us. Uh, they knew I believe that you had been distributing. They didn't know you were the whole they operation. Were, yeah, they were thinking that we just evangelize people about our faith. Uh, but um, yeah, God really protected us. Let's talk just a little bit about your life in prison. Um, I think it's important for people to hear what it's like for a young woman or anybody to be held by such an evil regime tortured or at least um, imprisoned for your faith and degraded. So talk a little bit about that, but also how you got out. That's an important uh, element of how God moved for you and, and Mariam, your friend, to get out of prison. But first, what was it like to be in prison? We read about it in, you know, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. We read about it in, in stories of other major Christian leaders who, who've been sent to prison. But, but you experienced this in the worst prison in all of Iran, Evan Prison. Honestly, it's very difficult to describe that prison. I try many ways to uh, to tell people, to show people how was uh, that place. Uh, I found a place in uh, Jerusalem that finally I could uh, explain to a few of my friends who were with me uh, to explain to them how was the first jail that I was in. It was underground dungeon that I shared with you that uh, we could not see the light, uh, we had to sleep on a cold concrete floor, and all the time they were insulting us, and the guards throwing food at us, and they were just putting- Treating you like animals, really. Yeah, like animals, and they uh, forced us to be naked right in front of their eyes uh, for body search. Mm. They, they were using different ways to treat you like animals, mm. they, to break, uh, to bre in order to break you, to disrespect you. And especially if because of uh, my faith, my friend and I, uh, inside Evan prison that they later sent us, uh, we were in another prison because uh, all prisoners were allowed to use the library. The, they were able to use some facilities in prison, but uh, for us, they forbidden it. I remember the first day I went to uh, attend uh, uh, in that facility, the first question was it, uh, that the lady asked me uh, was that, what is uh, your charge? And as soon as I said, I'm a Christian and I'm here because of my faith, she got so mad at me mm. and she, get, she said, get out of here. You are infidel, you are, you are dirty, you need to be executed immediately. That really broke my heart and I told her, hey, I'm here because of my faith and I'm proud of that. Mm. 
I am not a criminal. But there were there are there were many times that uh, we were in, insulted uh, like that. Uh, in all the courts, they told us that you will get executed if you wanted to insist. Did you on believe them, or did you think it was just a threat? Oh, it, you you should believe them. You don't. You have no idea who they are and what they say. They are serious about. They are not kidding. I was witness to execution of my cellmates, and once they put me in a cell before having a very intense interrogation, and after building friendship with my cellmates, uh, they took one of the cellmates and executed her in order to show me what will be the cost of our resistance. And they later, you know, they um, sentenced us to death by hanging. And they were keep pushing us, keep threatening and, our but, lives. And yet you sort of turned the prison into a church. Yeah, and praise God, you know, we found it, as I mentioned, even though it was very difficult to be witness uh, all those brutality and to see those horrible things. I was sick physically. I was under so much pressure, but still we found a great opportunity to share our faith with many prisoners. Um, I remember there were some prisoners at the beginning, they were prejudiced Muslim. They called us dirty Christians for months because they believe uh, under Islam, if when you convert from Islam to any other religion, you are infidel and dirty. But we try to show them who Jesus is by our behaviors, by loving them, by praying for them. And after that, amazing miracles uh, were happening in a prison among prisoners. And God gave me dreams and my dreams came true. And they could see that there is a truth in our faith. And some of them came to us, they apologized. They said that we see the difference between your faith and our faith. There are many stories that uh, we shared in our first book, Captive in Iran, that how Jesus changed that prison for us. Uh, and it wasn't just us, other prisoners that they could have vision and dreams and uh, God spoke to them. And we could see that God is working. You didn't think you were ever gonna get out and yet, God got you out. Um, I mean, maybe you thought you were just going to yeah. go to heaven, like that would either be there forever or, you know, be executed and yeah. be in heaven. But in the few minutes that we have, um, how did he get you out and why? Yeah, we were, as I mentioned, we were sentenced to death by hanging and we were not supposed to get out. But because of, first of all, I believe it's, it was God's miracle and God's grace. Uh, but second, You're in the city of miracles yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> second, it was because of lots of international pressures because we heard that many Christians started advocating for us. Uh, Amnesty International got involved. Pope from Vatican sent a letter mm -hmm. to government on behalf of us and wow. many people in the United States. And because of all those international pressures, they had to release us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive. That's why I wanted to emphasize that how much international pressures are important, especially at this time that the second revolution started in Iran and they have arrested thousands of people. They uh, shoot at uh, hundreds of people, killed many people. And uh, I encourage people anywhere in the world try to put, the, uh, put pressure on the regime. Small things uh, matter. For example, when we were in prison, people started writing letters to prison and we were receiving like uh, 50, 60 letters every day, which Whoa. made them very angry. And they told us your, uh, your letters are more than our official letters. And they could see that the world are watching them. That's okay. why uh, one of the reason that we didn't uh, raped or uh, physically mm -hmm. tortured, we, mm -hmm. that didn't happen mm -hmm. to us. That's because good. in those cases, when it gets international attention, they try to be cautious. And I Same. encourage people to support uh, their brothers and sisters in mm -hmm. other parts of the world, especially Iranian, uh, who are paying a lot of price for their faith. And they are in prisons. They are fighting against this regime. Mm -hmm. And I encourage uh, Christians to support them. There's so much more I want to ask you, uh, but I need to direct people to your two books, uh, okay. Captive in Iran yes. and A Love Journey to God, right? But let's close with, Marzi, what's the best way that Christians can be praying for the people of Iran, for the leaders of Iran, and for the believers in Iran? 
Yeah, there are many ways that they can pray. They can pray uh, right now for um, the churches in Iran. As you heard, Iran has the fastest growing churches. Yeah, there are many. I'm a little jealous. Yeah. In Israel, it's not growing <laughs> as fast as in Iran, our worst enemy. Yeah. I, I believe after the fall of this regime, which is not very uh, far, Good. millions of people will come out yeah. and many Christians, many believers. Uh, we can pray for Christians. I'm sure that there are many uh, underground churches. They are in secret, but they are very active evangelizing people. Uh, we can pray for the families of those uh, people who, ha who have their lo loved ones in prisons. Mm -hmm. We can pray for the fall of this regime, which is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And Iraq, the Islamic Republic regime is the biggest state sponsor of terrorism. Mm -hmm. And they are not having the blood of Iranian uh, people on their hands. And you know that they have the blood of all people around the world Jewish people, Americans, uh, Middle Eastern people, they sponsor all the terrorism. So this, this is very important. Iranians are fighting against uh, the enemy of the world, the enemy of democracy. It's not just their enemy. That's why it's very important for all of us to support people at this um, important time that they are fighting against an evil and encourage their leaders and urge their uh, leaders to support the Iranian people at this time. That's very important. Amen. I agree with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to Israel for your first time and being here during a time when Iran is trying to attack us from Lebanon, yeah, Syria, I heard about Gaza, uh, terrorists inside our country, infiltrating our country. Uh, you. Uh, as an American from Iran visiting Israel, you come at an interesting time, but I think it's very important, and I hope that you feel blessed here in your time. I was so that, blessed. As you walk through the streets yeah. and uh, discover mm -hmm. the places where Jesus uh, did his ministry, this yeah. very city, where he's coming back to one day. And uh, so there's hope in this world, and I think you're a great example that God wants to rescue men and women, young people from every country of the world, certainly Israel, certainly Iran, to, mm. to, because he loves us. He loves mm. us and he wants to change us. He wants us to go to heaven. He wants yeah. to forgive us of our sins. He wants us to rescue us out of darkness. And in a world where darkness seems to be falling worse and worse every day, uh, that, that's good news. All right, you got the last word. Yeah, I, I'm so, as you mentioned, I'm so blessed to be in Israel and I'm very grateful for Israeli leaders for not bowing down mm. to this mm. regime and are, uh, they are very strong leaders, and I believe Israel and Iranian people have the same enemy, common enemy, and we need to stand together, and my hope is that, that's my vision actually, to see Iran and Israel as strong allies again, oh, like great. the past. <laughs> I want to thank you again, Marzia. Thank it's great you. to meet you. Uh, you're always welcome to come back here thank to Israel. So and we pray that uh, God uses you uh, to continue to reach many with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.